Good evening. Chicago is still talking about last night's disturbance at Comiskey Park. On July 12, 1979, at Old Comiskey Park in Chicago, the place baseball's White Sox call home became the epicenter of controversy after the son of the team's owner, Mike Veck, took a swing at marketing and, depending on one's perspective, either struck out or hit a home run. The White Sox were trying to put people in seats. And the radio station, I guess, was looking for promotion. The stunt was called Disco Demolition. Bring a record, get in for 98 cents, and watch a doubleheader in between games. I'll blow up the records that you bring. Dahl, an anti-disco kind of guy, came to Chicago to DJ at a rock radio station after the Detroit radio station he worked for switched over to disco, and he lost his job. I started making fun of disco by blowing up records on the air. I would put a record on and then I would drag the needle across and then blow it up with a sound effect. Uh, and people seemed to like that. So, I, I mean, I really was just, I was complaining about, I was mad that I got fired, uh, but I clearly tapped into some sort of disenfranchisement. Dahl was to blow up the disco records in between a White Sox and Tigers doubleheader, but he worried he wouldn't fill the seats. I went from being fearful that no one would show up to then uh, being uh, afraid of how many people had shown up. Huge crowds started forming outside of Comiskey Park. Inside, the stadium was sold out, 59,000 people in the stands. They stopped taking records at one point because they got so many. So they just told people, to, kids to keep the records, which was a mistake because they started using these frisbees, deadly frisbees. As the first game ended, Dahl took to the field. We came in on a Jeep uh, through the center field gate, and uh, people were throwing cherry bombs at us and beer, and they were the people that liked us. I prepared no remarks. I didn't think it would matter. And then, I, you know, here I am standing in, at, in the center field in front of a stadium filled with, I don't know, whatever the capacity was, plus people climbing up over the walls outside, people up on the foul poles. It was pretty crazy. I guess I gave a countdown. There was an explosion. I thought, okay, good, this is over. Let's get out of here. That was just the beginning of a series of smaller explosions that led up to the big one. And that was a really big one. Way bigger than I had imagined. After blowing up the records, Dahl and the others left the field. But many in the overflowing, charged up anti-disco crowd weren't ready to settle down. I don't really know exactly when people started running on the field, but I had left the field by then. And a common misconception is that I urged people to come on the field, which I did not. But thousands of fans rushed onto the field where a bonfire was beginning, wreaking havoc and creating chaos. There was a fire in center field. People were running the bases. People were like pitching with imaginary uh, baseballs and you know, swinging with imaginary bats. It was, uh, it, it really wasn't violent. It was just kind of, uh, out, you know, just fun, I guess. Police and riot gear were called and dozens of people were arrested. I really think that there was something in the air that was really violent last night. I just felt sure that something was gonna happen and I kind of thought they might cancel the uh, between game activities, but they That's didn't. That's what we thought. Because it turned out uh, disastrous. And of course, uh, when one person comes down on the everybody field, knows. everybody thinks, well, it's okay now, let's all go. And uh, you know, it was, a, it was a desperate situation. Because of field conditions, the White Sox were forced to forfeit the second game. We have played in many worse uh, fields than, than the one last night. So I think that the game should have been played and there was no possible grounds for, for uh, forfeiting it. Disco demolition night would become headline news. Let's see, you got, you got everything here. You got drunk people, you got fire, you've got a guy rallying them with like a helmet on. It was just about uh, releasing some tension and having a little bit of fun and, and it got out of hand. It was the wildest baseball scene. I've covered this game 26 years now, and nothing has topped it since. For better or worse, Disco Demolition Night became known as one of the most successful promotional stunts in sports history. It certainly didn't look at the end of that evening like it was going to be a warm and fuzzy. Thinking about it now and looking back 25 years later, it shows you how forgiving history can be and how unforgiving papers can be the next day. 
Steve Dahl became a hero and a national celebrity. Obviously, it turned out to be a big thing, and it worked out well for, for a radio station, not so much for the Sox. As for disco itself... I don't know that Disco Demolition Night played a role in the demise of disco. I think it was on the way out. Uh, I think I might have just been in the right place at the right time.